Wow. Good water pressure. That's what I like to see. Hey, you can wash your car with that. Now that we got our water source piped in, we're gonna get in here and mash in for the very first time. And my primary mash is gonna be mangoes. Boy, look how ripe that is. Buddy, that's some good meat right there. The newer generation is want something fruity, something tropical. Well, they got a good, like a piney taste to them is what I like. That's gonna make some good brandy right there, boy. We've got to put some water in here and get it fired up. I tell you what, man, it seems like every season you wait all your life to light that fire for the first time. Put a little gas to it. All right, Daniel. Light her up. Watch the sound I love to hear, that first fire up. Let's get this liquor done, son. Let's pour her over. Is that it? Get old mangoes. I'll add the cold water to it. Get that old magic dust right there, and you do the honors for us, brother. Some yeast. There you go. You want to stir it in? Get it to work in there. Mm-hmm. Let's let her off and get out of here. Leave some breathing room. Boy, it's going to be some good stuff. Mike and Daniel are working on a technological tweak that will boost the flavor profile of their moonshine. Yeah, I'm heading down here to Daniel's house right now, my partner, and uh, I've got an ID. We've got a 30-gallon stainless steel pot, and we can't make a whole lot of liquor on it at one time. So my thinking is to run some premium brandies, and I'll be able to uh, sell my liquor for a lot higher price than I would regular corn liquor. Yeah, we are, we at old Daniel's house. Yeah, you know, I'm in debt to Mark and Digger, and I intend to get it paid off the best way I can. And that's that's one big reason why we're doing this, to pay our debt back, but it can be a good thing that's happening for us to introduce new flavors to the world and the younger generation. Hello. Come on in. <laughs> what the hell are you well known, huh? Well, I'm building a banger. I figure we might need another. That's right. There's old Pretty girl, ain't it? Yeah. Me and Daniel, we actually built this little silver cloud last year out of old beer kegs. It's just an all-around good rig to make brandies out of. I like to do a little modification to it to infuse flavors. We could build an arm from here to the worm. I've got a couple of jars here. Create two gin baskets to pack fruit in them and let the steam come over and infuse into them gin baskets. And I believe it'll hit that, that flavor note just right, and we can bring premium price. Yeah, brandy will make more money. Way more money. Having this debt with Martin Degger has really motivated me and Daniel to, to get out there and do some creative things. All this flavored stuff it yields a higher price per gallon, so we can make bigger money for less volume of alcohol. That way we can put a little money in our pocket, pay our debt off, and, and go on about our business. That looks good. It does. We're soldering this pipe together so we can start cutting this center joint out to put our gin baskets in. I was just saying. Hell, I'm a trying. Get it screwed down. All right, we've got an arm which yeah. we could run liquor through. Yeah. Now we've got to figure out on where we're going to hang our gin baskets. What about right there and right there? Take your finger right there, your bird finger. Go to your right just a little bit. Right there? Button right there. Go right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's dead center. All right. I'd say that'll work. that'll work pretty damn good. Voila. Each time it runs through one of those jars, not only is it infused in flavor, it's actually double distilling every time it runs through. So on a regular run, you'd probably get seven or eight gallons of liquor. In this case, I'll probably get 10 to 12. This is going to make a big difference in the moonshine world. This is going to be high quality liquor. I say she's ready for the woods, man. Let's check that my shot. Good God. It's loud. Is it about ready to go? No, it is ready to go. You can taste the mangoes in it, too. Mm -hmm. It's strong, for sure. Let's get this stuff set up so we can fire it up. We've got to dig out flat pads up the side of the mountain to where it all set level. I want you to look at that. That goes plumb to China. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That's why the old timers used to do it 100 years ago. They purposely picked the hardest spot to dig out, to carve into, just so somebody just won't stumble up on their side. You know, it don't even matter. We'll dig it right now, or we'll dig it when they catch us running liquor. We'll be on the chain game busting rock. Well, sure enough, have you on that, boy. You good at that, ain't you? Well, this moonshine's easy, ain't it? <laughs> Easiest thing in the world. 
What's wrong with that right there? I don't see nothing, except it ain't got alcohol coming out of it yet. Our base mash was mangoes. That goes into our pot. Now all we got to do is fire it up and see how it goes. I'm ready when you are, buddy. Put it, do it. That'll work. We got that fire lit for the first time this season. It's like the gun going off at the first race. Bam, baby, I'm ready to go. I believe that right there will make some good stuff, buddy. This will be the first time we ever tested out these gin baskets. It was just an idea that I come up with to transfer flavors. That could be something somebody else ain't seen. That's what it's all about, introducing something brand new. Oh, yeah. Every time. Some good premium brandy will fetch a higher price than corn liquor. My biggest hope is that mango mash infuses into that pineapple and kiwi, you know, and creates that good brandy. Work it around as you go down. That right there ought to transfer some good tasting stuff. We've never done this before. It's looking good, but I'm nervous about it. So we'll just stand back and wait and taste it and see how it's going to work. We're going to put the old coon rod in here and get her ready. Lay it to it. All righty. We're actually starting to transfer into the first jar and the second one just a little. And from here out, you'll have mango, pineapple, kiwi flavor coming all the way down and out to the worm. It's actually going to be distilled four separate times before it ever comes out the worm. And each time it distills, it's getting more and more pure as it goes down the line. Oh, we got a damn leak. Turn that bar down a little bit. We got to get some paste on it. We have got a vapor leak. But with a steam leak, you better get it fixed because you can get your butt exploded if you're losing all your liquor steam. That's money going down the drain or down through the holler, one of the two. I think we're all right right now. My biggest worry is catching anything on fire or hurting somebody. I'm liking it. We got liquor running, too. Oh, Lord, we do, don't we? Boy, damn, you can taste the fruit in it. It's hot. I'm going to pitch them heads off real quick. You know, it's always safe to catch heads because of all the toxins and poisons that can be in it. Let's proof that down, brother. Boy, it looks good. That whole bucket full right there is about 120. Let's take his horn out. God almighty, that's good, son. I can taste a pineapple coming through hard on it. On the first. And it's number one. Damn, it tastes just like I thought it would. You can taste that mango right off the top, and behind that, you can taste a hint of the pineapple and a hint of the kiwi. Looks like we about got a bucket full of liquor over there, don't we? Let's pop this cap. Let's get up here and get our jars. It turned out to be six good gallons of 120 proof brandy. It tastes great. I love it, and I believe it'll fetch a high dollar. I got that some pretty brandy. 